Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, you make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a classic cable stitch sweater. For this one, we went with a classic design that's stylish yet simple, so this is just about as beginner friendly as cables can be. There's texture courtesy of my favorite cold weather stitch, Alpine. And the design is fairly gender neutral, so it's perfect for anyone in the family. Speaking of, if you love making things for the fam, you're in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet patterns from masculine sweaters and cardigans to the most feminine of dresses. With new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 750 grams of yarn, and that's 1100 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you prefer warm or cold weather. I like cold weather for cold weather cuddles. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using six stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the sweater started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6 millimeter hook, and we're going to start by making an even number chain that reaches from shoulder tip to shoulder tip. But be sure to keep the chain taut to keep it from expanding over the next few rows. And I need a total of 12 and a half inches or 32 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 42. And I already have my first two rows finished. So I'm going to be doing a little sample size with you. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain, and now we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain, starting with that chain that we blocked off. So yarn over, bring our hook down into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook. We're going to pull through. Then yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do another. Yarn over, into that following chain, insert, pull through, pull through all three. Continue putting one half double crochet into every chain. Our row one is finished. Getting started on our row two, that's going to be another half double crochet row. So let's all start with a chain two. That also doesn't count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. Flip our work and then put one half double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over into the last stitch from our previous row. Pull through, pull through all three. Continue this until you reach the end of the row. Our first two rows are finished. Now we're going to get started on our front panel detail and we're going to start with our twists. So let's all start with a chain two and flip our work. Now for our cable stitch detail or for our twists, they're going to be three small twists right next to each other and they're all going to be done exactly the same way. So let's get started on the first one. After our chain two and flip our work, we're all going to prepare for a front post treble crochet. So that's going to be a yarn over of one and two. Each of our twists is going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're working on row three, we're going to be inserting our hook into row one. We're going to find that first half double crochet from our row one, making sure that we aren't counting that chain two. And we're going to find our second half double crochet. So like I said, this is my first. This is my second. So into that second half double crochet, we're going to be doing one front post treble crochet. So we're going to skip that first half double crochet, 
Underneath the second, insert your hook, and then bring your hook through the other side of the body of that half double crochet. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Next, we're gonna be doing another front post treble crochet into the stitch directly after that one. So again, yarn over twice. There's one, there's two. We're going to find that following half double crochet, insert a hook underneath the body of that stitch, underneath and through the other side. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through. And again, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. Now I should have two front post treble crochets right next to each other. Now to finish off our first twist, we're gonna be doing another front post treble crochet into that skipped stitch, so into the first half double crochet from row one. So again, yarn over once and then twice. We're going to bring our hook down into that skip stitch. So bring our work down and over. Then we're gonna bring our hook underneath that first half double crochet through the other side, pull through. Then from here, again, yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now our first twist is finished. So our second and third twists are gonna be done exactly the same way as the first one. So we're going to yarn over twice again. We're gonna find that following available half double crochet from row one. Here's my first, and we're going to find that following, so into the second and insert with a front post treble. So we're going to skip one, underneath that following, insert your hook, bring it through the other side, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna be doing another front post treble crochet into that following stitch. So yarn over twice, into that following half double, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And when we have those first two stitches, we're gonna finish off this second twist by putting one front post treble crochet into that skip stitch. So yarn over once and twice. Bring our hook down underneath that skip stitch and through the other side, pull through. Then yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And now we should have two twists right next to each other. We have one more left to do, so let's do this third one a little bit quicker. Start with a yarn over of two. We're going to skip that following stitch and then into the stitch right after that. Insert with one front post treble crochet. One front post treble crochet into that following stitch as well. And then one front post treble crochet into that skip stitch. So yarn over twice, bring our hook down into that skip stitch and through the other side, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Now all together, we should have three twists right next to each other. And right after that, we're gonna get started with our alpine stitch detail. Now getting started on our alpine stitch detail, it's going to start with a half double crochet for everyone. So we're all gonna start by counting out nine stitches from our previous row, because we just did a total of nine stitches for our twists. So taking a look at our previous row, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then into that following stitch, which is the 10th from our previous row, insert with one half double crochet. So yarn over, inserting into that following stitch, yarn over and pull through all three. Now for our alpine, it's going to alternate between a half double and front post double crochet, so let's get started on our front post double. We're all gonna yarn over. Counting from our row one, we're going to skip that following available half double crochet because the half double crochet that we just did counts as that stitch, and we're going to jump over to that next stitch. So we're gonna bring our hook down and underneath that following half double crochet, yarn over and pull through. 
Now, when we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to pull up nice and tall to get the same height as that half double crochet. Over. And then from here, we're going to finish our double crochet per usual. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now that is our first alpine stitch set. Now let's do this again. So getting started on our following alpine stitch set, we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. We're going to skip that following stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as that stitch, and then into the following, insert with a half double. So insert, pull through, pull through all three, and now a front post double crochet. So yarn over. We aren't going to be working into that following available half double crochet because the half double crochet that we just did counts as that stitch. So into that following available half double, we're going to insert our hook underneath, through the other side, and pull through. When we have those three loops, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two, and we now have two alpine stitch sets, so let's just do one more together a little bit faster. So yarn over. We're going to skip that following stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as that stitch, half double crochet into the stitch right after, and then our front post, we're going to yarn over. We're going to skip that following half double crochet from our previous odd number row, and then underneath that next half double crochet, insert your hook, bring it through the other side, pull through. When we have three loops on our hook, we're going to pull nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two, and we should all together have three alpine stitch sets. We're going to continue to do our alpine stitch until we have a total of nine stitches left, and then I'll meet you back so we can close this row off with our cable stitch twists again. So I have made my way all the way across with my alpine stitches, and I have a total of nine stitches left, and now we're going to do our three twists together. Now just to make sure that everyone is on the same page, we should all have nine stitches left. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we will have one stitch left over, but that technically counts as our front post double crochet that we just finished. So now from here, let's get started on our twist. Our twists are gonna be done exactly the same way as we did the first set. So together, let's all yarn over twice. We're going to skip that following half double crochet from our previous row, and then into the next insert with one front post treble crochet. Into that following stitch with one front post treble crochet again. And now that we have those two, we're now going to be working into that skip stitch forming our first twist. So yarn over twice, back into that skip stitch, pull through. Now that is our first twist, let's do the next one. Yarn over twice again. Skip one, into that following stitch, with one front post treble, into the following with another front post treble, and now that we have those two working into that one skip stitch, so yarn over twice, into that stitch, to form our twist. Now all together we should have two twists. We are going to be doing a third twist that is exactly the same, but the last stitch is going to be combined with a half double crochet to finish off the row. So per usual we're going to yarn over. We should have one, two, three stitches left from our row one. We're going to insert our hook underneath that second to last half double crochet to do our first one. Into that last from our previous row, we're going to insert with one front post treble crochet as well. And the twist for this last cable stitch twist is going to be combined with a half double. So we're going to yarn over twice per usual, and then we're going to bring our hook back into that one stitch that we skipped. So everything is normal per usual. Once we pull through, we should all have four loops on our hook. That is normal. We're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two for three loops, yarn over, pull through two for two loops. When we have those two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and then insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through for a total of four loops on our hook, then yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. And that is always going to be how we do our last twist. 
because we like for this edge to be pinned down. Now every even number row is going to be a half double crochet row. So from here, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then put one half double crochet into every stitch. And we should have the same amount of half double crochets as chains that we made when we started off this section. Our first one, two, three, four rows are finished. Now let's get started on our row five. So since we're along the edge, we're gonna chain two and flip our work. Now our twist for every odd number row is always going to be done the same way. And each of our odd number rows is going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're currently working on row five, we're gonna be inserting our hook into row three. So let's do our cables together. Like I said, they're gonna be done the same way. So we're gonna be going through this a little quickly. We're gonna yarn over twice. Taking a look at our row three, we're going to skip that first stitch and then into the following. We're gonna insert with one front post treble crochet into the next stitch, another front post treble crochet. And then to do our twist, we're going to work into that skip stitch. So yarn over twice, bring our hook down into that first stitch from our row three, pull through, pull through two, two, two. And that is our first twist for our row five. Let's do the next ones. We're gonna yarn over twice. Skipping that following stitch, we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch right after that making sure that we're working into a row three, pull through, pull through two, two, two. Again, yarn over into that following stitch, insert, pull through, pull through two, two, two. And now to finish our second twist, we're going to do a front post treble crochet into that skip stitch. So bring our hook down into that skip stitch, pull through, pull through two, 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 and we have one more left to do. So yarn over twice, Skip that following stitch and into the stitch right after that. Pull through, pull through two, two, two. Then into the following stitch with another front post treble. And then into that skip stitch with another front post treble. Now our twist should start to form our little twist like that. And now we're gonna get started on our Alpine stitch. Now the alpine stitch detail is really gonna be the only thing that's different per row, only because each of our stitches needs to be staggered. So as an example, our previous odd number rows alpine stitch section starts with a half double crochet. Since our stitches need to be staggered, we're gonna be inserting a front post double crochet into there, and then into that following stitch, insert with a half double crochet, so that half double crochet is on top of our previous alpine stitch rows front post double. So let's do this together. We're gonna to yarn over once, and then into that first half double crochet from our previous alpine section, go ahead and insert your hook in through there, pull through. We're gonna pull up nice and tall to get the same height as our twist, pull through two, pull through two, and now we have to do our half double crochet. Now we're going to be counting out a total of 10 stitches from our previous row because we did a total of 10 stitches here. So counting all together, we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So skip the first 10 stitches and then half double crochet into the following. And that is our first Alpine stitch set for this row. Let's do this again. We're gonna yarn over. Our front post double crochet is gonna be worked into our previous half double crochet from our Alpine stitch row. Insert your hook underneath there. Pull through, pull through nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two. Then we're gonna yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. We're gonna skip that following stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as that stitch and then into the stitch after that. Insert with a half double and that's that. We're going to continue to do our Alpine stitch section until we have nine stitches left to do and then we're going to repeat our twists again. And as a quick tip, we should have the same amount of Alpine stitch sets as our previous Alpine stitch section. All right, so we've just done our alpine stitch detail, making our way all the way down until we have nine stitches left and now we're ready to do our twist. Now our twists are going to be exactly the same as our row three's second twist, so let's get started. But just as a really quick tip, the last stitch that we should have done for our alpine stitch detail should have been a half double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over twice. We're going to skip that first stitch from our previous odd number row, underneath that following with a front post treble, 
a front post treble into that following stitch, and then a front post treble into that skip stitch, forming our first twist. Again, yarn over twice, skip that first stitch underneath the second with one front post double, another into that following stitch, and then another front post treble into that skip stitch, forming our second twist. And now our last twist is always going to be done exactly the same way per usual, except that last stitch is going to be combined with a half double. So yarn over twice. Skip that first stitch underneath that second with a regular front post treble, another front post treble into that following stitch. And now from here, we're going to yarn over twice to do our twist. So inserting our hook into that skip stitch, we're going to bring our hook underneath, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left. So yarn over, pull through two for three loops, yarn over, pull through two for two loops. Then we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, then yarn over, pull through all four. And now our row five is finished. Like I said, each of our even number rows is going to be a half double crochet row. So from here, chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. So we've just finished up our half double crochet row. Now all together, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six rows. To get started on our following row, let's chain two and flip our work. From this portion forward, we're going to continue to repeat rows three through six until we get a length at the top that we want. So placing this first row where we want the bottom of this top to be, so you can make this cropped, full length, or a dress. And then we're going to continue on repeating rows 3 through 6 until this reaches the base of our neck. And I'll meet you back right after we finish up a repeat of row 3. So I'm just going to get started on the following row with you guys, just to refresh your memory. So since we're working on row 7, this is going to be a repeat of row 3. But our twists are all going to be the same, so I'm just going to do the first one with you. We're going to yarn over twice. Skip that first stitch, and then into the following, insert with one front post treble. Yarn over twice, into that following stitch with a front post treble. And then into that skipped stitch, one front post treble, forming our first twist. We're going to do the same thing for the following two twists that we have. Now that our twists are finished, we're going to get started on a repeat of row three's alpine stitch detail. So just as a refresher, we're going to skip a total of nine stitches from our previous row. So counting that out together, we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and into the 10th from our previous row, insert with a half double crochet. And just to double check, our stitches from our previous alpine stitch detail is staggered. Our first stitch from our previous alpine stitch detail should be a front post double crochet. After that half double crochet, we're going to yarn over preparing for our front post double crochet now. We're going to find that following half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch detail. Insert, bring your hook underneath, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two. And that is our first alpine stitch set. And that's pretty much it. We're going to continue to do our alpine stitch detail, making sure that we close off the row with our three twists. And the last stitch in the row, our front post treble, will be combined with a half double crochet as well. I'll meet you back when we have the height of this portion finished up, and then we can get started on the shoulders. Now the height of my front panel detail is finished. I have a total of 51 rows, and this height is just about 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters. Now from here, we're going to start working on the shoulders, which is just going to be our cable stitches worked all the way up. So since we should all be along the end right after we finish a cable stitch row, we're all going to chain two and flip our work. Now since we just want to extend the cable stitch detail, we're going to be doing nine half double crochets because that's the amount of stitches that it takes to do the cable stitch detail. Now that we should all have our nine half double crochets, chain two and flip your work. Now this is gonna be super simple. We're basically just going to do the second cable stitch detail all the way down. So just as a refresher, we're going to yarn over twice, find that second stitch, making sure that we're only looking at that cable stitch detail. And into your first twist, we're going to skip that first stitch and into the second, insert with your first front post treble, into the next with another front post treble, and then into that skip stitch with a front post treble. So this is per usual. We're going to do our second 
twist, and then do our third twist, remembering that this last one is combined with a half double crochet. Right after that is going to be a half double crochet row, and then repeat. From there, we're just going to repeat our twist row and our half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until this can reach the top of your shoulder. I'll meet you back once we do a chain up one cut right after our last row, and that last row needs to be a cable stitch row. I am back and my shoulder portion is finished. I now have a total of 61 rows. My shoulder portion was about four inches or 10 centimeters, or my total length is now 22 inches or 56 centimeters. Now we're going to do the same thing here we did on the other side. So let's flip our work over to look at the back. Since our twists aren't reversible, we're going to need to count nine stitches in from this outer edge. So all together, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and insert your hook in through that ninth stitch. You're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of two, and that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, we just need the height. And now we're going to put one half double crochet into every stitch, including into that same stitch with our chain two. So let's start with that. Insert your hook into that same stitch with a half double crochet. And continue this until we reach the end of the row, we should all have a total of nine half double crochets, making sure we're not counting that chain two. Now that we have finished our nine half double crochets, let's chain two and flip our work. Now from here, we're going to be doing the same twist that we did for the other side of our shoulder portion. So our three twists and then our last front post treble crochet that we have to do is gonna be combined with a half double crochet to close off that row just to keep it secured down. So do your first two twists and I'll meet you back to do the last one just to remind you how it's done. We have just finished our first two twists. Now to do the last one, we're going to do it per usual so front post treble crochet into that second available stitch, because remember we're skipping that first. Another front post treble crochet into that following. And then front post treble crochet into that stitch that we skipped. But we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. And now from here, yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through all four. And then after this is going to be our half double crochet row, so chain two. Flip our work and put one half double crochet into every stitch. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our twist row and our half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as our first shoulder portion over here. When we have that, do a chain up of one cut. Both of our shoulder portions are all finished. We have the same amount of rows on both sides and we are all done with the set. Now we're gonna get started on the side panels so let's make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch. Now that our hook is in through the bottom corner, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and we're going to do a single crochet row all the way up, alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there. If you have your tail end right here, go ahead and place that over your hook and then single crochet around everything because we want to weave in our tail as we go. Let's do the next one. This is my following side row, so I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So here's my first. And then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. And that's it. Let's do the set one more time. This is my following side row. I'm going to insert my hook in through that top loop with one single crochet and then into that following side row with two single crochets. And we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way up. So our single crochet row is all finished. Now we're just going to do back loop half double crochet rows until we get a shoulder portion that reaches about two inches past the tip of our shoulder. So let's just get started on the following row. Let's all start with a chain two and flip your work. All we're gonna do is yarn over, Find that last stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And then do a regular half double crochet. Let's do this again. Yarn over into that following stitches back loop, pull through, pull through three, following stitches back loop, pull through, pull through three. We're gonna continue putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. When we do, chain two, flip our work, and then repeat. 
we're going to continue to do our back loop half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until we get a shoulder portion, like I said, that can reach two inches past the tip of our shoulder. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're going to repeat everything we did here on the other side as well. Now when we have both of these sides finished up, I will meet you back so we can get started on the back panel. So both of my side panels are all finished up. Counting from our first single crochet row, I have a total of six rows. Now just from my single crochet row to the end, I have a total of two and a half inches or six centimeters. And since I did finish up my second side, my total width is now 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters. And I did do a chain up of one and cut after my second section as well. Once we have this, we're going to be making one more identical panel. So the front and back panel will be exactly the same. And once we have both finished up, I'll meet you back so that we can seam everything together. But just a really quick tip, as you guys can probably tell, the edges will start to curve just a little bit and it may even start to curl in on itself, but that's completely normal. It'll all even out once when it's seamed. But I'll meet you back when we have both panels finished up so that we can seam the shoulders. So now that both of our panels are finished up, we're ready to seam our shoulders. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out meaning the cable stitch and the alpine stitch detail is now faced each other because we want this single crochet seam to be along the inside when we flip it right side out. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side half double crochet. We should have one single crochet row, so one single crochet is going to be worked into there. And then we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch on top of our cable stitch detail as well. So let's get that started. Now finding the first side row within the front panel, this is mine. I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook. I'm going to find the first side row within my back panel. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop as well. And if you're like me, you'd like to weave in your tail ends as you go, place your tail ends that you have over your hook and then single crochet once. Now let's do the next one. This is my following side half double crochet. We're now going to be doing two single crochets. So into that side row, insert into that top loop into the front panel. Find that second side row into the back panel, insert your hook into that top loop, and then single crochet once, and we're going to single crochet into the same top loops again, and it should be a little bit easier since they should be gathered. So into that top loop into the front panel, same top loop into the back panel, and single crochet. And we're going to continue to do this until we reach our single crochet row. Now I've just done my last single crochet into my last side half double crochet row. Our following side row should be a side single crochet row. So we're going to find that top loop within the front panel, insert your hook, find that side single crochet row within the back panel, insert your hook into that top loop with one single crochet, just like that. And now from here, we're going to continue on with our single crochet seam, but this should be a little bit easier since we have actual stitches to work into. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. Let's just do one more. Here's the first stitch into the front panel, first stitch into the back panel, and single. And we're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up a one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. So now that our shoulders are all seamed up, we're now going to want to seam our sides. So first things first, we're going to want to make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning the shoulder seam that we have is now flipped along the outside. And also we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into a stitch that is in multiples of three, the width that we'd like for our sleeve to be. So if you'd like a wider sleeve, insert your stitch marker lower, or if you'd like a slimmer sleeve, insert your stitch markers higher. I would like for mine to be about regular sleeve size, so I've inserted my stitch marker in the 24th stitch from the top, and that's just about six and a half inches or 16 centimeters. Now from here, we are going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. So we are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to do another single crochet seam. So just do the first few, we're gonna find that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, since we have some tail ends, I'm going to place that over my hook and single crochet over everything. Let's do the next one. Into that next stitch into the front panel. And then into the next stitch into the back panel and single crochet. 
and continue this until I reach our stitch marker and then do a chain up a one and cut, then repeat on the other side. All right, so now that everything is seamed together, we're now ready to get started on our sleeve. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is now flipped right side out, meaning all of the details that we have are now along the outside. And then we're gonna start by inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. From here, we're gonna start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our sleeve to be. So I would like for mine to be a long sleeve, so I need a total of 16 inches or 40 centimeters. So I will be making a chain 60, but you can make this as long or short as you'd like. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first row, which is going to be a half double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain. Do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And we're gonna half double crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. So bring our hook down into that blocked chain insert, pull through, pull through all three, and continue putting one half double crochet into every chain. So we just made our way all the way down with our half double crochet row, and now we're going to connect it into the base. So how we're gonna do that is start off by counting up the next two available stitches into the base. Here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. Now that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it into the base, and to work our way up to the following row, we're gonna slip stitch it into the next stitch into the base as well. So into that next stitch, insert, pull through everything, and flip our work. That second slip stitch also doesn't count as a stitch. And now from here, we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, and insert in through that back loop with a half double crochet. And from here, we're going to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're going to chain two, Flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we reach the base and then I'll meet you back just once more. We now have one, two, three half double crochet rows for our sleeves finished. We're going to connect it into the base just once more. So whenever we're connecting an odd number row into the base, we're going to count up one, two stitches and slip stitch into that second stitch into the base. And that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. And then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. That also doesn't count as a stitch. Flip our work. And then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And that's it. We're going to continue to do our back loop half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And when we don't, I will meet you back so that we can seam everything together. So I've made my way all the way around with my back loop half double crochet rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, so now we're gonna seam it together. So first things first, let's all make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out. Next, we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, do a chain up of one to secure. Now let's do our first single crochet seam. Let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, and then find that first stitch into the back panel, and single crochet them together and that's it. So pretty simple. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then I will meet you back. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, let's get started on the cuff. So let's all start by flipping our work right side out now and then we're gonna insert our five millimeter hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom of our sleeve. Next, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. So this is my first side row that I have right here. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook with just one single crochet. Let's do the next one. This is my following side row. Insert into that top loop with another single crochet. Keep doing this, making our way all the way around, and just as a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So make sure that you're trying on your sleeve right after your single crochet row, just to make sure that your hand can still fit through. If it's a little too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. Our single crochet row is all finished. Now we're going to start working on the length of our cuff. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out and right side up, we're now going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. I'd like for mine to be just about two inches or five centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of eight. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna block off that last chain, do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off with a second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook, gently yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Let's do that again. 
and through that following chain, insert, pull through everything. And continue putting one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row could be a little too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to need to connect it into the base. So into that next stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it into the base. Now to work our way up to the following row, insert your hook into that next stitch into the base, and slip stitch into there, that also doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. And now from here, we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding that last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on our hook. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, insert, pull through both loops, and continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When you reach the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the base. Now that we have one, two, three rows finished, we're going to connect it into the base. So let's all start by finding that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there to connect our third row, then to work our way up to any even number row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. We're going to continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Then I will meet you back to seam it all together. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now let's do our outside loop slip stitch seam. So let's all make sure the work is still flipped right side out. Then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything. Now for this seam, we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. So into the front loop only. We're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert into that back loop only. When we have those three loops on our hook, we are going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do that again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, pull through everything, and that's it. Continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, then do a chain up one and cut. Then repeat everything we just did here for this sleeve and cuff on the other side. So now that both of our sleeves are all seamed up, let's get started on the bottom band. We're first going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and then we're going to insert our 5 millimeter hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and do a chain up of 1 to secure, and we're going to start by putting one single crochet into every side row. So this is my first side row right here. I'm going to insert my hook in through that top loop with a single crochet. Again, this is my following side row in through that top loop with another single crochet. And we're going to continue to put one single crochet into every side half double crochet row. And then also into the side single crochet rows that we have as well. So the single crochet row that we have right here in between the half double crochets and the cable stitch detail. So find that top loop when we reach that side row and insert with one single crochet. And then once we reach the bottom of our cable stitch detail, one single crochet into every stitch. So just to do the first few, we're going to find that first stitch underneath the cable with one single, find our following stitch with another single, and continue this, making our way all the way around. And just like the beginning of our cuff, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So go ahead and try this on, making sure that it can comfortably fit over our shoulders when we're putting it on. If it's a little too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's a little too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip, and then slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you back. Our single crochet row along the bottom is all finished. Now we're going to work on the length of our bottom band. I'd like for my bottom band to be just about 3 inches or 8 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 12. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain, and just like our cuff, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So do a chain 1, that chain 1 doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, and that's it. Continue putting one slip stitch into every chain. So we're going to connect it into the base the same way that we did for the cuff. So finding that next stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch, that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, and then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and then connect it into the base the same way that we just did. 
From here, we're going to continue to repeat our back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into so that we can seam everything together. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch row, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam everything together. So just like how we seam the cuff, let's all make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, and then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and just to do the first outside loop slip stitch seam together, we're going to find that first stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. Find the next stitch into the back panel and insert only into that back loop and pull through all three. And we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our bottom band is all seamed up, we're next going to work on the neckline. So first things first, we are going to make sure the work is still flipped right side out, and then we're going to be inserting our 6 millimeter hook into the side row that we have that's nearest to the shoulder seam. From there, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now, making sure that we're using a medium to loose grip, we're going to do a single crochet row along the entirety of our neckline. So we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row, and then one single crochet into every stitch. So let's just do the first few side rows together. Let's all start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook and place my tail end over my hook since I'd like to weave that in as I go. And single crochet, making sure that we're not tugging on our yarn after we finish the stitch. Let's find the next side row. This is mine right here. Insert in through that top loop and single crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue to put one single crochet into every side row and also one into every stitch, making our way all the way around, then slip stitch into that chain space. Our single crochet row along the entirety of our neckline is finished. We're now going to make a chain the width that we'd like for our collar to be. Now I'd like for mine to be just about 4 inches or 10 centimeters, so with my 6 millimeter hook I'm going to make a chain of 17. And now that we have our chain, our collar is going to be exactly the same as our bottom band and our cuff. So block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, and continue with one slip stitch into every chain, and we're going to connect it into the base the same way that we did for the bottom band and the cuff. We're going to continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back to seam it up again. So our collar is pretty much finished. We've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now let's seam it together. And this is going to be the same seam that we did for the cuff and the bottom band, so make sure that our work is flipped right side out. We're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything. And just to do the first one, we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert in through that front loop first available stitch into the back panel and insert into that back loop, pull through all three, and then that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that we have finished seaming the collar, we are all done. Last thing we're going to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.